Welcome back to Inside Look, an Inside Ambition segment where we take a deep dive into something happening here at Drexel. I'm Alexandra George. And before you click away to a video of the actual John Oliver, please make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and following us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Today, we're talking about sex. Don't worry, I'm not here to give you the birds and the bees lecture and leave you never looking at your parents the same way again for four to seven business days. I wanna talk about sex as college students, how it really happens. Somehow as college students, we are always talking about sex. Hookup culture is real, but at the same time, we are not talking about the very serious dangers that come with it. No, not chlamydia, well, Yes, that, but we can talk about that another time. We have all heard stories of someone or some two or some 10 people who engage in problematic behaviors. Take one second to think. I mean, it probably won't even take you that long to think of someone rumored to be a serial abuser. We have all heard stories, or perhaps you just have a gut feeling about someone that rubs you the wrong way, or maybe you yourself are a survivor and you know a little bit too well what I'm talking about. Now, let's take an inside look. Every 73 seconds in the United States, someone is sexually assaulted. One in every four college women will be sexually assaulted during their undergrad, as well as one in 16 men. That doesn't even take into account the much higher rates of sexual violence for people of color and members of the LGBTQ community. And out of all of these cases, only one in five people formally report. At least 68% of all rape cases are never reported, and only 6% of those that are result in a prison sentence. This is such a big issue that we have addressed it on our channel twice before. Maybe if you people watched our videos, we wouldn't have to keep talking about this. I mean, who wants to hear all this coming from a 21-year-old white girl who has a history of saying some pretty suggestive things about a certain campus furry? But I'll have you know that I stand by every single word I've said. Mario, you can pick me up and fly me away anytime you like. His eyes are literally gold, y'all. You know me, I'm all about the jokes, but it is long past time to start taking the culture of sexual assault and harassment on college campuses seriously. This is not about an isolated incident. This is about the behavior we see on a day-to-day -day basis. We all need to start taking some responsibility for the hookup culture, or rather sexual assault culture that is college life. And before we get any further into this, I wanna make it very clear. None of this is the fault or the responsibility of survivors. They did not ask to be brought into this narrative. And as great as speaking up can be, it is not always the best choice for certain people. Besides, it can take years for people to even recognize that what happened to them was sexual assault. And that is okay. It should never fall on survivors doing the reporting to be the only way that people are held accountable. I think we can all recognize that to combat the culture of sexual assault, this is not a conversation about what to do in reaction. We need to talk about prevention. Once again, it is any survivor's choice to report formally, informally, within the university system or otherwise. And that is completely okay. What is not okay, in my opinion, is that it seems like there is a large majority of people who do not feel comfortable reporting incidents through the Office of Equality and Diversity at Drexel. We pay way too much money to not feel comfortable doing that. Everyone here works for us. So we have to ask ourselves why. Many times, students who report sexual assault at universities have to tell 
and therefore relive their stories multiple times to school officials. Some may not even hear back from offices until months after a report. This isn't unlike anything in the real world, especially in the United States, where there is a national backlog of rape kits sitting on shelves waiting to be tested, granting abusers time that they do not deserve. The support for survivors should be overwhelming and abundant. And the university's climate should be very much against supporting abusers. If someone even looks at your classmate in an uncomfortable and provocative way, everyone should be calling them out. We need actual, tangible, sufficient change. It should not take someone flying too close to the sun for people to finally care about their behavior. And we know that power means nothing when it comes to sexual assault. Exhibit A, Exhibit B, Exhibit C. The rates at which college students are sexually assaulted are truly staggering. And this is only from what we know. Sexual assault is often depicted as an iceberg where we only know about 10% of the incidents and the overwhelming majority are under the surface. The culture of binge drinking on college campuses has long been correlated with the existence of sexual assault and rape. The rhetoric that men shouldn't have their lives ruined because they hooked up with a drunk girl is all too common, just as we've seen in the case of ex-Stanford swimmer Brock Turner. He was sentenced for six months in jail after he was caught sexually assaulting an unconscious woman behind a dumpster after a college party. He has since been released from jail after serving only half of his six-month sentence. This norm is most evident on the national scale, as we've seen with particularly men in power. In 2018, it was Brett Kavanaugh who was accused of sexual assault by a former high school classmate, Dr. Ford, who finally spoke out because she couldn't bear to see her abuser sit on the highest court in this country. Regardless, he was confirmed and is now Justice Kavanaugh for life. What kind of president does this set? that abusers can climb the ranks into positions of power and furthermore make decisions that influence others? I guess there's no better example to reflect this than former President Donald Trump's inexcusable, notorious phrase, grab them by the, well, I won't repeat it here because we are, after all, a respectable, almost student organization. The former president has been accused of rape, sexual assault, and sexual harassment, including non-consensual kissing and groping by at least 25 women since the 1970s. That is a repeated behavior. The only thing scarier than the fact that over 70 million people voted for someone with that past is the fact that studies show that repeat offenders commit an average of six or more acts of sexual assault. Six or more! Regardless of a survivor's gender identity, the rapist is male 99% of the time. In fact, a man is more likely to be a survivor of sexual assault than they are to ever falsely be accused. Fraternity members are three times more likely to rape than non-fraternity members. And on average, college athletes represent only 4% of the student population, but commit 19% of sexual assaults. Huh, who would have thunk? Institutions in power messing with people's ability to treat other humans with respect? How peculiar. The most prevalent date rape drug is you guessed it, alcohol. At least 50% of college student assaults involve alcohol, yet 80 to 90% do not report it. This does not mean that we should shame survivors for drinking, but rather address the binge drinking climate that we as college students have perpetuated. The point of this episode is not to strain my voice or make you listen to an angry rant that offers no call to action. Even though I am angry, I am ranting and I am going to need a hot tea with lemon after I finish taping. I am standing before you 
well, sinning as someone who wants change. College students typically fail to report instances of sexual assault for the following reasons. First, fear that the university won't believe them or that they will be shamed. Second, that thinking the situation is not serious enough or was their fault. And lastly, some are worried that their report will not be treated confidentially and that the university won't take any action. The truth is that mechanisms of reporting are not easy nor friendly towards survivors. Just like how the IRS makes it complicated for you to actually understand what you're doing when filing taxes. Accessibility is key. Drexel, I'm looking at you. There is an ongoing disparity between people getting assaulted and people reporting, and it shouldn't be that way. Imagine someone coming up to you and stealing your cell phone right out of your hand in the middle of the street, and you just shrug it off and say, well, no one's gonna believe me, or reporting is too long and complicated of a process, they can just keep my phone. Or be witness to a crime like that and just say, oh, they were asking for it. They had their phone right there in their hand, open for anyone to take it. Everyone knows that bad things happen in Philadelphia or in fraternity basements or in college dorm rooms. So after my long-winded metaphor, the call to action is adopt transparent and robust disciplinary procedures and sanctions have properly resourced student support services and respond and support students in a matter that is timely. And lastly, develop a range of ongoing prevention strategies reinforced by visible university leadership that cultivate an inclusive, diverse, and equitable campus. But also advocate for yourself. Talk to your friends about hookup culture and sex. Share this video to get the conversation started. Call out the locker room talk that you hear that contributes to an unsafe environment on campus. And of course, believe survivors. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and we'll see you soon.